everybody. Timo here. This episode is part of the Gitcoin Climate Solutions series. Please head on over to gitcoin.basin.global, check out our grant for the round, and then click back to grants, and you will see all the awesome climate projects. There are 40 individual projects and 10 bundles. This Gitcoin Climate Round is funding $333,000 of matching funds to all these awesome climate projects. So please support them and welcome to the episode. Basin.live is made possible by the Climate Collective and brought to you by Basin.global. Welk Kennedy from Shamba. I think it's probably wait there where you are. Hi, TMO. It's great to be here with you, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, no problem. Kennedy is a prolific creator here in the refi, regenerative finance space and doing some really cool stuff, primarily in Africa, but I think your project is going to be global. So why don't you give us a rundown of what you're up to and what you're hoping to achieve? Thank you, uh, TMO, and thanks for having me here. And uh, to give you a heads up, you can find our grant on the Shamba Network. Uh, we have it in our bio over there. Oh, cool. So, okay, uh, great. Yeah, so really great to be here. Uh, I've been looking forward to having a space to talk online. I think this is a really great platform of going here. Super stoked for it. And I'll be a regular audience. And so uh, just to introduce myself, my name is Kennedy, based in Nairobi, Kenya. Founder of Yamba Network, where we are building ecological data oracle to provide Web3 with data about the environment as well as a decentralized MRV network to provide the reporting, the monitoring, and the verification that is needed to support carbon credit. We are a Web3 first project, so we're developing all of this to support Web3 paradigm, people who are trying to build regenerative finance and carbon credits using blockchain technology. So we're really excited about being on Gitcoin. It is where we have actually gotten the support to build to where we are right now. We started in Gitcoin GR14. Then we've been able to develop a host of tools that are geared towards helping people use satellite data on-chain, helping people determine ecological on-chain. Now we're moving towards supporting the carbon industry. So it's been a really great journey, and we are so grateful to the Gitcoin community for supporting us and really helping us get to this point in our roadmap. Yeah. Cool. We had Magenta on from Bloom Network earlier before Sev, and we were talking about for Basin and for Bloom. And it sounds like for Shamba also that it's been integral to our funding or in not just funding, but community building. And it, 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 do you echo that sentiment? Yes, I truly echo that sentiment. I'd say that a powerful thing with Gitcoin is that it not only allows you to get the financial resources to develop the project, but it's also a platform to meet with and connect with so many people who are building and who are doing all very fantastic. So you find people that you end up working with, people that you end up partnering with, people to bounce ideas off and to basically refine whatever you're doing. And so I guess the old, it's not a really bold saying, but it's a saying that you, you come for the money and you stay for the community. And I would say that yeah, the funding is just one you know, of the value propositions on Gitcoin. The community is a really huge deal. And it has helped us not only to build, but also to have some important relationships because we've been able to connect with people who we are now actually providing with data to power their solutions. So it's been a really great place to connect with the whole Web3 unit. Yeah, I like how you said that. It's just money, right, or finance. It's just one of the value propositions of Gitcoin. There's the technology layer, there's the people layer, the networking, and then the money is just in the memes, right? That's another another fun fun part of it. Yeah, the memes. Also, <laughs> when it comes to the community, I think it's also Gitcoin has evolved to become this like quarterly liberation or ceremony, which kind of links people together. Because it is during Gitcoin that you see all of these people reaching out to each other, having spaces, updating the world on what they've been building, and where things are at. So it's become this kind of like a meeting spot. It's kind of like online conference where people come together, people meet, people connect, and it's basically helping to build that community within RedPi. I think it's really fantastic. And uh, yeah, we are so glad to be part of this community that is really helping to change the world. Yeah, I, I love that. Like a, It's like a quarterly celebration or conference for people to get together. And what also comes to mind, Kennedy, is like accountability. It's a way on your grant page, one of the first things you start off of, what have we achieved since GR15? And that's for Basin, we had to do the same thing. We went through, okay, what have we actually done? And so you have to 
present that to the world and say, look, this is, here's a, a project, here's a website, here's the ideas, here's the technical building that's happening in the background. So that, I think that's really good also, just that, that accountability standpoint. I think the accountability is great because you can imagine outside of Gitcoin, the only way for people to keep track of what guys are building is either to attend town halls or be on Discord or something of the sort, or maybe need to read newsletters which come once a month. Not a lot of people are going to go through all of that. Gitcoin is a time when people will actually come on, people will post about what they've been doing. So it's evolving into this really, this general Web3 town hall where everybody comes together and they all share with each other. And I think it's so much potential that can come from it. And yeah, I'm excited to see what comes from all these rounds and especially in future now that this new decentralized protocol has been launched. Yeah. Cool. One of the reasons for this Basin Live format, that's streaming on LinkedIn right now, it's streaming on YouTube, is a way to show these other communities that are maybe scared of Web3 or nervous about crypto unsure about blockchain, you know, those three words are bad words. We don't, we stay away from those scammy things. It is to show those, the rest of the world, the, re, the other people building in the climate space or nature space or data space, like you are, that like, these are just tools. Like right? nothing to be scared of over here. And it's creating real world impact, like on the ground. Magenta was on and they have 12 local blooms and they have 30,000 people in their network. Ba Basin has 2,000 people in their network. We have several different pilot projects we're working on trying to implement all this stuff. It's like, how do we actually show the rest of the world that crypto and blockchain in Web3 is not just speculation. It's like real world like impact. And so with that, I, Kennedy, I'd love for you just to, people might not know what an Oracle is, or people might not know what RV, RV is over in the climate space. Like people are talking about MRV and on LinkedIn and whatnot, but like DMRV, if you could just give a rundown of oracles and DMRV and how Shamba plays into that. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Maybe the first question would be what an oracle is. And basically an oracle is this infrastructure that bridges the divide between the real world and the on-chain world. Because a lot of these applications that are running on blockchains, powered by smart contracts, they are not really able to just get information from the real world. So an oracle is what allows them to be able to connect to systems in the real world and to be able to know what conditions are like. For instance, the weather is like some, how much rain has fallen during a particular period, if there is a fire or not, a wildfire burning some, what is the soil moisture or how much vegetation do we have in a particular area. This kind of measurements about the physical, the real world, this is, this is what an ecological data oracle provides. So a smart contract that can be parametric, maybe it is designed to trigger when a particular environmental threshold has been crossed. This art contract is able to rely on Oracle to be able to then get the data that it needs to execute. So Oracles are going to play an increasing role, especially when people talk about ESG. When people talk about like in COP27, we had about loss and damage financing, countries that are affected by natural calamities. Oracles can play a big role in helping Web3 be able to realize that paradigm, in helping Web3 to be able to build applications that can be triggered when a particular disaster has happened somewhere, sensors pick it up, maybe satellite sensors otherwise, and then this information is all channeled into smart contracts. So Oracles are building that paradigm for bringing on data. And aside from Oracles, we also have DMRV because Oracles actually playing a role within DMRV as a backbone. If we think of DMRV, we are thinking of digital monitoring, reporting, and verification. It is a different paradigm from traditional MRV, which was built on a lot of manual processes. With digital MRV, the idea is to tap into digital tools, things like satellite data, things like data from IoT, from sensors, as well as a lot of models and things like machine learning and AI. Basically, things that can help us to be able to quantify, assess impact and verify impact without having to resort to traditional means of data collection. Now, an oracle is actually a very important part of that infrastructure because it is what allows this data about the physical world to be channeled and uh, this verification and impact need to be sent to blockchains, where it can then be used in different applications. So when we think of uh, ledgers such as region ledger, 
which is an ecological park ledger. It can be connected to an ecological or such as what Shamba provides to be able to connect that data, to be able to get it online so that anybody who needs to find out uh, what is happening with a particular uh, carbon credit, they can see all the data that is pulled in that particular carbon credit. And so when I think of Oracle, I think of like truth or source of truth. Is that how you view it? Or do you view it more as like a connection point? When I think of Oracle, I think of like truth, right? Or central source of truth. What's the Oracle say? Yeah, but when I listen to you describe that, so eloquently describe that, I think of it as like a connection point, right? Of, okay, there's data on site or in the field or like with IoT or with handheld sensors or LIDAR or whatever. And then it shows the data or it, does it, would you say it confirms the data? Like how would you say, or it verifies the data or it increases the trust score of the data, or does it verify with another Oracle to make sure it was 32 degrees Fahrenheit at that point, latitude and longitude at that time? Like how do you, how does it interoperate interoper, with other things? You always think of MRV as being these three pillars. You have monitoring, you have reporting and you have verification. So a lot of the time... An oracle would play multiple roles depending on what it is being used. For instance, if uh, if it is something like smart contracts that need to know how much rain has fallen in an area or how much vegetation is present in an area, that is basically monitoring and reporting. An oracle is getting information about the real world and then reporting it to a smart contract that has requested that data on chain. So that is monitoring and reporting. And then when you think about uh, data that is being used to back a carbon credit, for instance, be on a ledger such as region. In this role, the Oracle is playing the role of verification. It is basically providing the data that can be used to verify impact, to be able to ascertain that, you know, it's valid and a carbon credit is actually valid. Really so I'd say the Oracles cut across both R and V, the monitoring, reporting, and verification. And it is in the application that you actually get to tease out what role it is playing within bigger framework. Cool. I, I love how you broke it down using the three different parts of MRV. Why in, in your write-up, and this it's a word, right, that we use all the time, but decentralized, like wh why is decentralized important? Yeah, that's a, that, that cuts really to the core of how we are doing this at Shamba. So the reason decentralized is important is because, first of all, it really changes the economics of MRV. I think for the longest time, MRV has been something that has been quite expensive, especially providing validation and verification data for carbon credits. It has been expensive because a lot of the times you have these very small centralized teams that have to maybe move into an area where they don't necessarily live. Usually they have to stay in hotels, they have to fly. You need to have this close group of experts going somewhere to collect that data. And all of those overheads, they definitely add up and they tend at the end of the day to make verification quite an expensive part of the whole board credit cycle. So when you think of decentralization, you're thinking about how can we move from a paradigm where the verification is being done by a small group of people to a paradigm where more people can be involved and we can even tap into local resources, local can be able to collect the data that is required. And this, of course, then helps us to cut out a lot of the unnecessary overheads costs that would go into the MRV, thereby eventually making it more affordable and cost-effective, especially when you're thinking of smaller projects that might not be able to pay the traditional V that is only we call at large scale. When you think of Africa and you're thinking of smallholder farmers, people can take action on smaller blocks and they might not be able to afford traditional MRV. So if we are able to build a proper, strong, and credible centralized MRV paradigm, then we can completely change the economics of providing verification and validation, which will allow people to be able to do carbon projects and take climate action, even within smaller groups. This has the opportunity of being able to provide or rather to allow so many people to participate. Another thing with decentralized is that it also builds transparency. Other than having this centralized organization that is doing everything, a lot of the time it ends up being something that is being controlled by a single entity, a small group of people. If you can have a verification and the data that is required to prove F of impact being collected by a wider group of people, being collected by a decentralized network, and all being put on chain, then it makes the whole process really transparent. It even makes everyone very satisfied that whatever credits are being created are actually valid because then everybody is able to see the data that is actually collected and they're able to see all the various people that were involved in that. 
it basically reduces any chances of somebody feeling like there was no mechanism going on that could change the data. So for the purposes of nomics and transparency, I do believe very strongly, and also digital, when we think about MRV, we're thinking about those digital tools because they allow a lot of automation, a lot of use of things like AI and whatnot. And I think those three things together, the digital part and uh, transparency, as well as uh, what I've just been speaking about, all of that comes together to make the whole thing really sustainable, especially when you're thinking of the economics. Yes, so I love that. Cons, transparency, digital. And what resonates from the first two guests, Sad and Magenta, was it relates to economics is actually being able to pay people on the ground for those regenerative actions or services they're providing. How is Shamba thinking about like how do local people get paid? How do they participate in the Shamba Oracle and, and the DMRB? Yeah, so that's a great question. I'm still building out a lot of our tech around the incentivization call because we do intend to use an incentivization protocol within Shamba to be able to incentivize the people who are going to be part of the DMRB network. But initially, we'll start with probably a Web 2 application, then eventually move to a fully Web 3 application as we continue building that out. But the whole idea is to have a bounty that folks can be able to that folks can be able to really say that yeah I can apply for this bounty and then I can do this work and deliver some of the results or rather some of the data that is required by the DMRV network. So we are really thinking about uh, using such mechanisms. I think the best part about that is that it allows the money within the carbon credit stack. Money that goes into validation and verification is not insignificant. But at the moment, it only goes to a very small group of, closed group of, you know, like a particular company. Within a decentralized paradigm, these, these funds that are used to pay for verification can be spread out to a wider network of people, including locals. And so it just basically, again, ties into that whole economic paradigm, ties into SDGs when you're thinking about opportunities for work or helping people to, to have ways to make income. So it just basically leads to more inclusion. There you're thinking of inclusion from the terms of people participating in the actual activities that lead to those carbon credits or financial inclusion, basically people being able to, more people being able to benefit from the whole carbon credit. And we think that especially if you can be able to, to get the youth to participate in that, then it gives them an extra impetus to be climate conscious and to be supportive of climate action. And I think winning the hearts and minds of people when it comes to the climate debate is one of the biggest things that we can do in trying to get climate action to a point where it can be effective. Cool. I have a question, but it looks like Seb has a question for Kennedy. Are you still planning on plugging Shamba into the Demeter framework? I guess maybe we should explain what Demeter is. They'll be on like, next week at some point. But why don't you take that one? Kennedy. Yes, the question to the answer to Sales question is definitely we are still planning to plug into the Demeter framework. I believe we already had a, a call. Where we looked at some of the data that Shamba is using, the GeoJSON, other formats. So I do believe as Demeter has been able to put together its core infrastructure, we'll be very happy to plug in and especially to provide data with regards to remote sensing and some of the other data that will be collected on the ground by network. But by and large, yeah, we are totally going for that and we will be plugging into Demeter. Yes. Right. And incestuous is a bad word, right? But I feel like a lot of this, the stuff we're all working on, all the different groups between Demeter Athena and Ogallala and Basin and Shamba and Ecolabs, I think we're building some real infrastructure here. And that's what's so cool about the Gitcoin climate round is like you said, Tinity, like quarter by quarter, people getting to see each other and catch up with each other and say, hey, this is how we work together over the last quarter. So I, I feel like there's going to be some really cool outcomes. We're going to look back on this in three years, five years, 10 years, who knows? And like, wow, like we were building the rails. At least that's my hope. We were, we were building the rails of climate solution and impact solution and the nature finance solutions. So it's cool to, to watch this all play out. Yeah, totally. I think we are building those rails. We are putting together what in the future will become hyper structures. And uh, just plugging into each other and figuring out how we can all support each other from the technical point of view and our own tech point of view, that is really important. And uh, be just to add some extra note about our grant TMO is that uh, during this particular phase of Gitcoin, we are actually going to, to be using our grant to build uh, the digital data that can be used for, for an MRV paradigm. 
And we'll be building this as an open data set so that anybody there who needs maybe to get the relevant land use, land cover data, or maybe soil data to assess things like soil carbon areas where we will have mapped, they'll be able to tap into this. And this is the beginning of our campaign where we are planning to produce geospatial based data sets on soil carbon stocks, both above ground and below ground. And we believe this will have a lot of impact on project developers who will be taking up projects in the future. Cool. I love that. The same with Astro or Digital Gaia, like these, or Ocean Protocol, like what these open data sets of what people can do with them or build on top of them to, to create the solutions we need is, it's really compelling to me. Yeah. Yeah. I think this kind of open data sets are really what are going, going to be the next big class of public because at the moment, like in Africa, a lot of the soil data is being held proprietary. So people are not really able to tap into that. Whereas this data set from the carbon angle, it can have so many other core benefits, especially in helping farmers think about food production, helping them to manage the resources and farm fertility, and generally just helping to secure things like food security. So this data has multiple applications and the climate angle is just one of the big benefits of it. And we are looking forward to being able to assemble it so that people can be able to use this resource. Yeah. I, I think, and I'd like to nail in on that point of like, we talked about carbon, right? And the carbon monitoring and the, your grant goes through the baseline carbon monitoring that you're hoping to achieve. But like in the title of your grant is the ecological oracle, which like ecology is a system. And there's, you mentioned co-benefits and there's all these other outcomes like food, food security and water supply, water quality and pollination and biodiversity. Do you, is, where is like natural capital and ecological asset on your roadmap? Do you, you think we're five years out, two years out, or how long do you think you're going to focus on carbon for? I guess is the question. Yeah, I think uh, ecosystem function approach is definitely one of the things that we are going to be following as we're doing all of this. Now, a lot of the approach is geared towards carbon because that's like one of the most mature markets. When we are thinking of biodiversity, what all of these other things, soil health, all of them are going to be a part of what really contributes to a functional ecosystem that is healthy. So I think a lot of these resources, a lot of these aspects also need to be measured by DMRV. In fact, they should actually be part of the core benefit come on to make a carbon credit more valuable. That, hey, I'm selling you this carbon credit, but it's coming coming with all of these wonderful core benefits. Attached. So it gets a higher valuation. And I think right from the get-go, as we are building this, yes, the focus might be on carbon, but we have to keep in mind all the other ecosystem services and be able to assess them as we are doing MRV. Yeah, it's the drum that I, I'm always beating and I'm not ashamed to admit it. It's healthy functioning ecosystems. It's not just about carbon removal and it's not just about global warming. It's about actually the water cycle and yeah, the species and biodiversity and human health and well-being. So like, I, I'd love for the audience just to, to just dig in on ecosystem services and ecology and how all, all these systems fit together because it's super important. Yeah, yeah. Healthy ecosystems, they are good for everything from the carbon to the water to biodiversity. So that is, that should be the, the, the main aim. If we just focus on carbon, then that narrow bone kind of tunnel vision might end up having some consequences effects on some of the other things. water. So we do believe that looking at it holistically is one of the most important things that we should be looking at as an industry. Cool. What help do you need? Do you need people? Do you need engineers? Do you need science? You need capital. Like, where can people support Shamba? Do you think uh, maybe because we're on Gitcoin, the first way to support Shamba is uh, hacking our grant. And uh, we do have our link. Thank you for sharing it here on the chat. Uh, we also have it to us who are on who are following us on Twitter. We have it on our bio, and of course on the grant page we have a notion link at the bottom where you can go read more about what our efforts are be especially with the mapping campaign that we are launching this year. So people can be able to, to go there. They can be able to check out all of that data. Aside from backing our grant, we are also really trying to get a lot of what we are already offering out there. We already have an Oracle that is offering more than 60 data sets, everything from weather to what is happening with soils to what is happening with vegetation and drought. So any of you guys who are thinking of building impact Especially things that are looking at things, building things that have safety nets, maybe things like insurance, things like uh, financial derivatives based on ecological data. We got you covered. We have this data. There are already people who are using it. 
to roll out solutions here in Kenya and elsewhere. So if any of you need any information can be captured by satellite, feel free to reach out to us. And also feel free to share with any of your friends that build us who might be able to use such data. Because it's already there and we are just helping guys to now start using it. Cool. And I see a bunch of subdomains. So it sounds like maybe the data is at one of those. You have refi.shamba, docs, docs, insights. Maybe just expand on that for a minute before we introduce Matthew. Yeah, thank you for that question. So these are the links of some of the tools that we have been building in the past year. Most of these things are actually supported by Gitcoin. So we have some tools that we have built for those people who want to work with satellite imagery, but you've never really been trained on that or know what tools to use. We have a full web-based tool where you just need to specify your area of interest and what data you're interested in. And we will analyze all of that data and show it to you in form of maps, graphs, and everything else. So you can be able to find the data set maybe that you'd like to use to verify some data. Yeah, that is under insights.shamba.app. Under contracts.shamba.app, it is a tool for developers. If you are a Web3 developer, you're working with smart contracts, but you have no idea how you can start consuming logical data in your smart contracts, then contracts is the tool that you want to follow, contracts.shamba.app, and you'll be able to generate boilerplate code that captures all the data that you need to be able to to request data from our Oracle. And then the other ones that we have there, like docs.shamba.app, that will give you all the information about the data sets available and what you can do with them. And the final link that we have there is refi.shamba.app, which is a tool that we have just rolled out to farmers so that they can be able to use it in creating carbon credits. So these are all tools that we are building. They're all for the community. And we are excited to help anybody who wants to use them. Feel free to reach out to us. We are available on Twitter, on Discord. We are always happy to take guys through these tools that we have built through the support of the Gitcoin community. Cool. Kennedy, keep up the great work. I love your forward thinking ability. I love the conversation of the different groups. The same thing I mentioned to Sav. Seems like you or Shamba is kind of one of these like hubs, right? There's hubs and spokes of like refi and the different climate aspects. And I feel like Shamba is, is one of those hubs. So it's nice to see you involved in so many different projects, but thanks for being here. And everyone, please support Kennedy's project Shamba over on Gitcoin. Thank you, Timo. Thanks everyone. And have a nice rest of your day. Make sure to add it to your final ballot. Please make a donation to every single one. It doesn't matter how big or how small it is. It's more about the number of votes and the number of donations that counts because that's what engages quadratic funding. This Gitcoin Climate Round is funding $333,000 of matching funds to all these awesome climate projects. So please support them.